Ray Arada, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, Jonathan. It's good to be here. I love your yeah. shirt, even though people can't see it. <laughs> I'm wearing a shirt uh, saying dad jokes. And then there's like a meter where you can say it's I'm full. So I'm full of dad jokes. My, my uh, son always tells me, he's like, dad jokes are the jokes that dads tell that just aren't funny. And he's absolutely right. Um, for for list, longtime listeners of the podcast, you know, I have six children ages eight to 18. And so uh, we try to keep it light, have lots of fun. And I am full of dad jokes for sure. Uh, Here's well, one more. Here's one uh, more. Go for it. Go for it. My kids are 29, 27, and 25. And when they were little, and I would turn them on to the classic movies, you know, E.T. or whatever, they called those OM movies, old man movies. So, mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. Yep. I also, I make a lot of pop culture references to the eighties and nineties. And so uh, my children are constantly telling me how old I am. So that's, that's great. Uh, well, Ray, it is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from California. I'm South of Salt Lake city in Utah. Today, we're going to be talking about your book showing up how men can become effective allies in the workplace. And so obviously there's going to be a diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging theme to this episode, but we're also going to come at this from the angle of allyship and what men uh, particularly white men, what we need to be doing more of to be supportive in this space, and really what we can do in terms of leadership development to help everyone in organizations grow this capacity so that we can do this better and make every organization, every workplace a safe, psychologically safe, a physically safe, emotionally safe place for people to bring their whole authentic self to, the, to work and the work they do, and that they can feel needed, wanted, valued, and have the opportunity to contribute in meaningful ways each and every day. As we get started, I wanted to share Ray's bio with everybody. Ray Arada is an award-winning diversity, equity, and inclusion leader and speaker, consultant, and trainer with global clients from PwC to Verizon to Toyota to Bloomberg. He founded the Better Man Conference for the development of healthy masculinity and men as allies and partners. He was recognized by UN Women in 2016 as a he for she champion for change and received the Ron Herring 2020 award. He is, his new book is showing up how men can become effective allies in the workplace, as I mentioned, and you can learn more at rayarada.com and bettermanconference.com. Again, pleasure to be with you. Anything else you would like to share with my listeners by way of your background, your personal context, your story before we dive on in and chat about your book? I guess the only thing I would share, because I don't know if uh, all your listeners will pick up on this, is my background with men's work and how I'm, how, I mean, I, I can tell my personal story, but in 1999, um, I got feedback both from my wife and my manager in the financial services business that kind of lined up. And I'm giving you the short version, but on the day that my manager gave me this feedback, I went into his office and said, thanks for telling me kind of what you said I've heard before. And since I'm hearing it at work and I've heard it at home, um, I need to do something because my wife didn't want to be married to me anymore. My wife had three kids. And so he said, close the door. And I sit down, he hands me a brochure and I look at this brochure and it says new warrior adventure training men's weekend. And I looked at him, I'm like, what the bleep is this? And he smiled and he said, can't tell you what goes on there. Wink, wink, but here, call my wife. It changed my life. So um, on that trust, I took his word for it. And I went to this men's weekend. And what I can tell you is that what it was in essence was an initiation into healthy manhood. I got a deep glimpse inside myself on how the pained little boy in me was running the adult bus and how it was impacting other people around me. So getting introduced to my emotions, which started my path of emotional literacy, which is one of my heart-based leadership principles, understanding what accountability was, understanding how uh, trauma from when I was a little kid formed all those I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy things that led to behavior that made me safe as a kid, but doesn't work as an adult. I went on this journey, joined you know a men's group to stay awake, if you will, and unbeknownst to me, uh, you know, thousands of hours later, I think I'm somewhere in the 15,000 hour range of working with men, 55 men's weekends, maximum security prisons. I met a diversity and inclusion consultant, a woman who said, Ray, you really have something. Corporate America needs to hear from you, particularly the men. You sound like them, you look like them. But first, I want you to go to a women's leadership conference and you're probably going to be the only guy there. So I went and she was right. 
And that's when I had my man in the mirror moment when I realized, oh, I get it now. My mom, who always complained being second born in an Italian American family where all the opportunities and privileges went to her brother because he was a boy. She wanted to play sports and go to college. It just didn't work out that way. And then I thought about my wife, oldest of seven, and her youngest brother was running the business. And then my daughter was going to be graduating from Duke with a degree in computer science. So I realized, you know, this gender equality thing was for real. And I started speaking to audiences of women. I'm like, this is going to take forever. What about the men? And so I came up with the idea of the Better Man Conference and called a bunch of corporates and said, I've got this idea. I want to advance healthy masculinity into the leadership conversation. Would you back me? And with that, I had my first Better Man Conference in 2016. Now, I've told this story many, many times, but only as of two weeks ago when I realized when I was in New York and I was at Michael Kimmel's International Masculinities Conference, I knew Sheryl Sandberg and Jennifer Siebel Newsom, the first lady of California, were backstage. So I now can say I walked back there with all my privileges, white male, six foot four. I walked I, like I owned the joint and nobody stopped me. And I walked right in. I introduced myself and they've become colleagues and supporters ever since. So hopefully that should give your leaders or your listeners uh, some background as to this work and how I got here. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And for anyone listening who can't see us, uh, we are both white dudes and I, I'm not going to speak for you, Ray, but I'm, I'm a straight cis white dude. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I, have all, yeah. I have all of the privilege and I recognize that I acknowledge that. And so we're doing this work. We're, we're in the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging space. We're trying to have these conversations, but also recognizing our privilege, recognizing we're coming to this conversation from a place of privilege. Um, and, and so that's a tricky thing. And as we were talking in the pre-interview, just getting to know each other a little bit, you know, we were talking about male allyship and uh, particularly for white men, um, this can be a, a, a challenging thing. And frankly, many people in our position simply are, are not comfortable engaging. Um, so they're totally back on their heels. They just feel defensive. They feel threatened. They, they don't know what to do, even if their intentions are good. Uh, and so having these conversations is so, so vital. Um, certainly, we need to have these conversations with everybody. Uh, so everyone can learn this. But because of the systems of oppression and systematic sexism and, and all these things that are embedded throughout society and within organizations, you know, what, what are we, where are we going to go? And how fast are we going to move forward if we can't get white men on board to continue to, to have these conversations and to make the changes necessary, the systemic changes necessary with the policies, practices, procedures within organizations so that we can truly level the playing field and give everyone equal opportunity, give everyone you know, the chance to be their genuine authentic self and contribute in meaningful ways in the workplace. That's the, the uh, inclusion and belonging piece. And that's the tricky part. And so you know, your book focuses on this. How do we really help men to lean into this space and to become effective allies. Now I say all of that, also recognizing my failures in the past. You know, I'm, I, I'm trying, I, I feel like I've tried for a really long time to be effective in this space, yet I know that I'm making mistakes probably on the daily. I, I say dumb things, I put my foot in my mouth, uh, I, I, I think I'm being effective in certain ways only to realize later that what I did wasn't effective for X, Y, Z reason. Now I could get discouraged by that. I could say, screw it. Why even try and just pack up and go home? Or I can try to learn <laughs> and, and grow and do it better the next time. And that's my commitment. Um, I, I know that's your commitment. And now we just need to figure out how can we help everyone lean into that discomfort <laughs> because it can be uncomfortable. So there's, there's, a, there's a couple of things that we don't do. What we don't do is shame or blame men. What we do is go first. Guys like you and I, got, uh, guys on your, on your, uh, who, who are listening, who are already, don't need to be sold on being an ally and being an inclusionary leader. Going first in my book, literal and figurative, is about being strategically vulnerable, understanding that men are going to be watching us all the time. And if we go, they'll go. 
So there's an aspect of that that's really, really important. And for everybody who's listening, being an ally is fraught with mistakes because we're human. So when you were talking about you that you've made mistakes, I make mistakes regularly. So what's extremely important is to bring, you know, forgiveness to ourselves, understanding our humanness, because in the book I talk about there's five states of men in most organizations. Um, and this helps men understand where they might be. It helps the people who are trying to engage the men in org where they might be and helps everybody else kind of understand. Those five states of men, there's one category of guys that feel threatened by DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, because it threatens their job, the operative word being there. That's their unexamined privilege in action. That's the same group of white guys that are saying, all this attention on white men over the last 12 to 18 months is a distraction. Once again, that's their privilege, unexamined privilege. The second group are the ones that don't know what to do. Uh, excuse me, not what to do. The ones that are articulate, there's business resource groups for women, LGBTQIA, BIPOC, et cetera, but what about us? They don't feel included. So I like that group because amidst their temporary pain of exclusion, they can have a an uncomfortable feeling of what it's like. And because they have position, power, and uh, privilege, they can, they can shift. The third group are the, one, the biggest ones, the ones that are afraid to say or do the wrong thing. So they say or do nothing, which signals complicity. We don't want that either. And for them, it's about having them change their relationship with fear, take a breath into it, and keep going, knowing that you might make a mistake. But when I talk about the allies' journey a little bit, there's a way for them to keep going. The fourth group, are the ones that want to do something and they don't know what to do. And the last group is are the allies in training. I refer to myself forever an ally in training because I'm not an ally until somebody else so designates me as such. So hopefully your listeners, just regardless of how they identify, um, may, may understand these states of men and can decide, you know, which, the, which one they want to aspire to. Yeah, and and the the main title of your book, the, the subtitle, of course, how can men become effective allies in the workplace? Super important. We're going to dig more into that. But I really like the main title, showing up, just being there. And and I think about it, you know, in terms of being a father. We've already kind of joked about the dad jokes and and everything. And I have six children. And and am I a good dad? I I sure try to be. I try to be a good father. Um, what does that mean? What does that look like? Every family, every home is different and unique, right? Um, and ultimately, what it means in my mind to be a good dad is to show up, to be present, to be there, to be engaged, right? And I think largely what we're talking about in this space of DEI and being allies, you know, and, and promoting allyship, it's the same thing. We just need to show up. We need to not be afraid to be present, to be there, and to engage. And if we can do that, you know, I'm not perfect with my kids, you know, sometimes I lose my temper uh, and I might snip at them or whatever. Uh, sometimes I don't spend as much time with them as I would hope. Uh, sometimes, you know, I want to do something, they want to do something else. And we, ha we have that kind of battle of wills. There's all these things we all deal with each and every day, right? Same thing applies in the workplace and in the DEI space, especially when you're having people who have all these privileges and the unexam unexamined privilege, as you mentioned, you know, trying to wrestle with all of this. Um you know, you're going to make mistakes, but if you just show up and if you're just consistent and you just make that effort to engage, you will develop over time and you will learn and you will grow and you will get better at it. So you just have to show up. So I love that, that just the starting point, the premise of your book. Yeah. The, it's interesting. <clears throat> my former partner, Chris Bell, she came up with the title and ironically enough, my first book that I wrote was wake up, man up, step up. <laughs> so I guess show up was the, was the final frontier. Um, and so it just, and that's what we're really looking for. It's, we're not looking for, for, you know, bystanders. We're looking for upstanders. Right. And so it's, it's, it just, it really fits. So I'm, I was really pleased when she told me, Hey, what do you think about showing up? I'm like, let me check with my publisher. And they're like, okay, done. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. So let's let's now dig into uh, some more specific approaches, strategies, yeah. tactics, however we want to frame it, yeah. uh, in terms of how we can develop into better allies 
in the workplace. You've already mentioned the five different kind of categories, the typologies of, of men in the workplace. How can we start to move along the spectrum? Because, you know, yeah, I, I guess one of the things in this space, because it's so fraught, it's challenging and it's difficult, is you have to meet people where they're at. And right. if, if, you know, if someone's at one place, I can't expect them to go from here to here, you know, overnight, like you have to, you have to make incremental moves. And, and so how do we go about starting that process? And what are some specific things we can start doing today? So the, the, the guts of the book uh, are centered around our allies journey framework, four steps of the allies journey. Now, this framework uh, is embedded in me. Uh, it's the backbone algorithm when I do a keynote. It drives our uh, trainings, our, my facilitated conversations with leader groups, et cetera. And in terms of memory, people can commit these four steps to themselves from a lather, rinse, repeat perspective. So I'm going to share them to answer your question. So the first one is, and I, I say this in dude talk, acknowledge your stuff. What's your stuff? Well, bias, privilege, your emotions. And most guys are like, what do my emotions have anything to do with this? And I, I say a lot because, you know, someone says you said or did something that, that, that landed wrong on them and made them feel isolated. A lot of guys would go to shame and they won't process shame and then they'll step back or they'll be, and or they'll be afraid to say or do the wrong thing so they won't do anything. That's how important our emotions are. And then this fourth thing called the man box. Those are the set of unwritten rules of what it means to be a man. Like real men don't show emotion. Real men make all the decisions. Real men are heterosexual. Real men don't ask for help, et cetera. So this first big step in terms of meeting men and organizations where they are is all about awareness. But this is an introspective dive into oneself in the spirit of what's driving your behavior. What's driving your language? Can you begin to think like an ally by uh, committing your, some of your energy to get curious about what's driving your language and your behavior? So that's the first step. Step two, listen with empathy and compassion. Now, there's a two-parter to this one. It's listen to the emotions that go on inside of you and listen with empathy and compassion to the emotions of others. This is the doorway of getting interested in understanding and witnessing the lived experiences of others. And most men, and I've done this in many trainings, when we interview women and men qualitatively, and we share with the men, <clears throat> are you aware that this is what the women's experiences in your business? These people sit around you. And the guys always usually say, I had no idea. Oh my God, what do I do? So that what do I do question indicates they're growing what I call empathy roots. And that's exactly where we want the men to be or anybody seeking to be an ally to anyone. So for your listeners, this, these four steps of the allies journey apply to broad-based allyship. And I've done keynote presentations to educate everyone, including the men. That's just the second step. And that's contextualizes empathy. The third step is take responsibility for the, un the unintended impact of your bias or privilege, and when necessary, clean it up. So here comes that step that, that bypasses your mistake and gives you a chance to get back on the horse by taking responsibility of what you said or did, what you didn't say or didn't do, had an impact on somebody. And so this opens up the door for your exploration of intention versus impact. So if I said something that offended you, Jonathan, and you mentioned that to me and I said, hey, bro, I didn't mean it. It doesn't matter whether I meant it. That's just going to center me again and invalidate your experience. We don't want that. So helping people understand to take responsibility and to get back on the horse is really, really important. We contextualize that as accountability. And finally, the fourth step is commit to new practices and behaviors that's where action and advocacy, advocacy come into place. So when you hear those four steps, an organiza most organizations are at the awareness step. Insofar as, and this is important for your listeners, if we look at Time's Up, Me Too, COVID, Black Lives Matter movement, 
They've all formed a perfect storm to shine the light on the majority, men. And the men who belong to that majority and everybody else can ask and answer the question, do we want to allow the minority of men, the bad apples who've driven the narrative, to control it? Or do we want to step off the sidelines, become introspective, and be part of the solution? So the timing right now is, is really, really good. And so when companies, whether it's their white CEO leader, uh, does, actually it doesn't even matter how the leader presents, but they recognize that most of the leadership positions are held by men. If they got interested in what other people are experiencing in their orgs and they are willing to find out the answer, they'd come to the same conclusion that I've been inviting them to consider for a long time. It's, a, it's an unconscious behavioral issue that can be remedied. And if you make it important enough and you meet those men where they are without shame or blame, guys care. And that's in the beginning of the book. More men care than we realize. And that's why one of the rhetorical questions I put to the reader is, why should I care? So um, I'm a bit long-winded, but that's it's important that's perfect. To, be to hear. Yeah, no, that's perfect, Ray. A uh, great framework. And really, we've just scratched the surface. I know at the time, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have to let you go here in just a few minutes. Um, but you, you've really primed the pump and given yeah. us a good taste. And, and the next step is, is yeah, get in touch uh, with Ray, check out his book. And I think that will be super helpful. Ray, before we wrap up for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, where they can yeah. find your book, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Sure. So uh, depending on the group you belong to, if you're a leader or you have a leader team, getting the book uh, is probably a really good idea for you all to do that first so that you can walk the talk before you consider an enter enterprise-wide engagement. Or if you're just an individual listening to this, regardless of whether you identify as a man or not, any or all of you can go to showingupbook.com. And if you go there, you can A, order the book and B, register for a free virtual ticket to one of our to our better man conference this is going to be held in the first week of november so that's one thing second thing is if you go to bettermanconference.com and sign up for our newsletter we'll keep you informed i write blogs occasionally and we'll just we'll roll out information regarding the conference and then third rayarata.com is where you can find out more information on me uh regarding my speaking my keynote speaking, my keynotes. And uh, what we're doing a lot of these days is a lot of trainings for companies. Uh, so what you can send me an email at ray at bettermanconference.com. So, and then uh, the final word, um, this is a movement and I need all the help I can get. If you're a woman and you know a good guy in your org, get him the book or introduce me to him. If you're an organization that is listening to this, uh, send 10, 15, or 20 people to the Better Man Conference in November. You can do it virtually or in person in San Francisco. So this, like I said, this is a movement, and I, I'm going to fly in the face of the uh, man box rule that real men don't ask for help. This man is asking for help. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Ray. It has just been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Ray and his team can do for you. Check out the book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.